So either the Margarita is poisoned, there's a bomb in the money, that she's going to kill him with the sword and take the money back. Someone's going to get double crossed here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I did not expect that. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Old Lady Reacts. I'm the old lady, otherwise I'm just Michelle in Minneapolis. I'm a huge movie buff who's seen pretty much everything. I even worked at a video store for a few years, but somehow I skipped over an entire genre of movies. So I created this reaction channel where I react to action and superhero movies and TV shows that I'm viewing for the first time. Um, I put a poll up on YouTube to see if I should watch volume two of Kill Bill right away and after, um, right away after watching the first one, or if I should wait a bit and watch something else. 72% um, of you said to watch it right away, so I'm going to do that. Um, Y'all don't leave, usually leave me astray, so why not? Um, I really liked the first one. I mean, it was, you know, I, I enjoyed, like, this dichotomy of this, like, brutal, buddy, bloody fight scenes with these just visually stunningly beautiful moments. It's it kind of fun that way. You know, you never really know what you're going to get. Um, I could do with ble with less blood spurting this time but i do realize that i am watching a quentin tarantino movie so i won't be too shocked if, to see some more of that in the second volume here um i'm sure we're gonna find out why they all tried to kill her like what happened um hopefully we'll find out pretty early on um but she's got like two i think two more assassins or is it three i can't remember from her list um, but she's got to get through them before she fa can face off with bill himself so that should be interesting I assume that she's going to succeed, but I <laughs> i know I shouldn't because uh, Tarantino isn't exactly shy about killing off his great characters. I do remember that. Like everybody winding up dead in the end is kind of his thing. So yeah. So right before we get started, please support my channel by subscribing so you can easily find me and watch more of my videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the bell button to be notified when I post the next reaction. So let's dive into Kill Bill Volume 2. In my actions. That this piano is very cool. Actually, Bill's last bullet put me in a coma. A coma I was to lie in for four years. Very film noir. I've killed a hell of a lot of people to get to this point. <laughs> you certainly have. That's a quite different style than the first one. We should, there was none of that in the first one. Maybe she's feeling more confident now. This feels more like a horror movie almost. I was part of the gang. I was a bar K. If they come through Texas, I can play with them. <laughs> Good to know, I guess. That is a very cool shot. Are you going to be nice? I've never been nice my whole life. Yeah, somehow I don't think so. He owns a used record store here in El Paso. Ah, music lover, eh? He's fond of music. But they don't have a song? That seems weird. As opposed to jetting around the world, killing human beings, and being paid vast sums of money. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Your side. Always was a bit lonely, but I wouldn't sit anywhere else. It's like I'm waiting for the explosion. <laughs> like, <laughs> look, we gotta go through this one more time. So, uh, why don't you have? S oh my God! <laughs> Is he gonna walk her down the aisle? Hmm. He didn't kiss her back. Hmm. Were there any pews in the church in the first, like there were just bodies laying all over them, so I wonder what happened with the pews. I don't remember there being pews in the first one. Oh, there's them, okay. I love that you can see the shadow of him standing. I'm assuming that's Bill that was standing that in the doorway, the, sta the shadow. Didn't he swear a blood oath to never make another sword? It would appear. He has broken it. A blood oath to who? <clears throat> I pawned that years ago. <laughs> you hawked a Hattori Hansel I don't I don't necessarily believe that. He still has it, I think. He just doesn't want to use it. And start becoming afraid of 
Because she is coming, and she's coming to kill you. Okay, so they're beeping her name? They did that in the first one. Why is that? Why not, not just say her name? Can we just forget the past? Hmm. Wait again. But can't you tell time? There ain't nobody in here, man. I was going to say, does it matter that he's not on time? I don't, there's your name. You say so. There used to be your name. <laughs> I don't know how much you want to piss this guy off here. <laughs> Call me crazy. I feel like he's going to like start the place on fire or something. So didn't they make money trying to kill Uma Thurman's? The character, what is the bride? Like, how are they so far? Uh, I mean, I suppose it's been what four years, five years, so maybe all that money's gone. But I'm like, wondering what set. I want to know what set all this stuff up. Is she up there looking at him with a gun or something? Is she underneath? Oh, okay, but he kind of knows that she's there, so. I feel like she's not going to sneak up on him. <laughs> it's not exactly a disguise. <laughs> I was going to say, he's sitting there waiting. So did he actually shoot her or did she have a bulletproof vest on? Don't turn your back on her, dude. Oh, so much for the sword. Put those rocks off. Got deep in their tits. <coughs> oh, it, so she, he did hurt, shoot her. What the hell? Oh. <laughs> How is she still alive? Like, I, I'm so confused about what's happening right now. Oh, okay. So is he going to like heal her only to kill her again and like torture her and stuff? Oh Lord. What happens now? I shot her full of rock salt. She's so gentle right now. Rock salt. So maybe not actual bullets. The greatest sword ever made by a man. It is cool how they built, they lit up the hills behind. Must suffer to her last breath. That hell, darling. I can pretty much damn well guarantee. Okay. <laughs> it's funny, this one feels so much more like a Western than the last one. Like the last one was definitely a martial arts movie. This is definitely a Western. Like it feels very different. So how is she still alive? Like, what did he shoot her with? Oh. Oh dear. Mm. Oh dear. This is going to give me nightmares, too. I don't want to think about this. Looking. I'm not looking. <laughs> what the hell is going on? I mean is oh that is that just the dirt falling on it? But it doesn't sound it doesn't seem like it would be that loud. Okay, I thought somebody was like getting shot or something. Is that what it sounds like? I wonder if they did they test that that that's what it sounds like? I could see Quentin Tarantino like being like, okay, put a microphone in a in a coffin and bury it and see what it sounds like when you throw dirt on top of it. Uh, 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 
Okay, so we know Buffy the Vampire Slayer got out of a coffin and that was buried underground. But she was kind of superhuman in a way, you know. Massacre of the Shaolin Temple and all 60 of the monks inside. At the Seems like a bit of an overreaction, but okay. But once you've taken five steps, your heart explodes. <laughs> sure, okay, yeah. When will I see you again? That's the title of my favorite soul song of the 70s. I'll have to look that song up. <laughs> I don't want to go for it. Yeah. Fight him, but... It's like, like, should I be offended by how cliche this is or just like amused that, you know, it's like this, uh, I mean, I'm assuming it's some kind of homage, but... You know, it does seem kind of cliche. Oh. At least it looks like fairly sticky rice. Oh, so we know she can like punch through wood. <laughs> there you go. If Buffy can do it, I'm sure she can. But that's the idea. Oh, I can't. I don't even want to watch it. Oh, just being in that, in there with the flashlight and everything. It's, oh. This is going to give me nightmares. If you had something at least. So, oh, the second you break it open, it's like the dirt's going to fall all in. Like, I just, oh. And then, like, you're talking about, like, getting suffocated and shit. Like, I can't. Ow, with the blood. Oh, you guys know how I, the hands thing, I can't. Oh, but the dirt's just all gonna fall in. Like, what do you do then? No, oh, what do you do then, though? No. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> you better do it fast. Yeah, filming that would not have been fun. So I still want to know though, what did he shoot her with that like made her, like it clearly wasn't bullets. May I have a glass of water, please? Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder like if she was smart, she would have like covered up the grave so they didn't know that she'd gotten out because they, they're certainly not going to like dig her up again, are they? Like she's already dead. She decides to walk wherever she's going? All right. Oh, and she doesn't have shoes on either. Ah, yikes. But now at least both of them are in the same place. Is she going to go get them now that they're both at the trailer? I have to give it to you, bud. That's a pretty fucked up way to die. It is. That's my money right there in that red bag, isn't it? It sure is. Is it? I guess we'll see. Dude, don't waste it. So. You better open that case and look at what's inside. Because it may not be money. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. So either the margarita's poisoned, there's a bomb in the money, that she's going to kill him with the sword and take the money back. Someone's going to get double-crossed here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I did not expect that. <laughs> Some kind of bomb in the, in the money. <laughs> now, where's the snake? Listen to this. 
Is she like immune or something? She better be careful. You know, I've always liked that word gargantuan. I so rarely have an opportunity to use it in a sentence. It is a good word. Or is it say, don't leave the money there? But where's the snake now? Like, I want to get the heck out of that trailer if that snake is still in there. But the snake is still there. Like, maybe fight outside. Oh, ouch on the foot. Okay. <laughs> Why can she not unsheath the sword? Oh, that is nasty. Oh, oh that makes me want to barf. That is nasty. Okay. I'm going to do it in a pretty unelegant way. Get the sword. Somebody get the sword. Like They got it there. Somebody should be using it. Oh, he, he does still have his sword. Okay. <laughs> that is a great piano riff on there. Guess that makes him a liar now, don't it? I'm still wondering where the snake is. <laughs> That's right. Is that patch just like the piece of a, it's just the lens from a pair of sunglasses? I don't think that's a bad thing. It looks cool. You don't have a future. Okay, but where is the snake? Cause she's got bare feet. Like. <sighs> He's draw it out, draw it out. Uh-oh. <gasps> oh, oh, got the other eye. Oh. Oh, mm. well, it's too bad. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> squish it. <laughs> okay, that's nasty. <laughs> oh, geez. I see, I knew the snake was somewhere. See, that set was as, as ugly and messy as, and gross as the other sets were in the first movie were beautiful and perfectly chosen. I took him to the movies. Even a movie starring Lana Turner. The Postman Always Ring Twice with Joko Fields. I have not seen The Postman Always Rings Twice. I would have been much nicer. Well, how just cut your face? <laughs> Gee, thanks. Those are good sunglasses. Bill. I might have to find something like that. So I wonder if that's the car that I read the story about, that she, she didn't want to drive it, and he said, Quentin Tarantino made her, that convinced her to drive it, and it, it crashed, and she, Uma Thurman was really badly injured. So I wonder if that's the car. Kind of famous movie cars, his stories. That's all very interesting. Why is she wearing a skirt? So at least finally somebody just like has a gun. That's good. <laughs> like, like, there's a lot of swords and like hand to hand things and snakes and things like. I feel like guns are just like kind of easier when the, in this world. Uh oh, who is it? I forgot about the daughter. I oh my god. I totally forgot about that. She was the most beautifulest woman I ever saw in the whole God, she's a cute kid. Oh dear. Mommy's kinda mad at daddy. Why daddy were you being a bad daddy? <laughs> she's such a cute kid. And what did you say? I stepped on him. Actually, young. Oh, and then you stomped on it. Uh -huh. I went, 
Okay, that's not good. Hmm. No, I knew what would happen to Mommy if I shot her. Yeah, I think you did. I didn't know. Because when I shot Mommy, what would happen to me? So is he, like, going to ask her forgiveness now or something? Which one do you want to watch? Shogun Assassin. No, BB. Shogun Assassin is too long. Mm. Shogun Assassin. <laughs> She's already watching martial arts movies at four. Oh, dear. Thirty-one lords. My father would come home to my... Has anyone seen this movie that they're watching? Sunrise, like a cup of real life. Oh, okay. Now, I have the solution. Ah! Gotcha! Uh-oh. Especially the ones about superheroes. That would hurt really bad in your leg. Ouch. Superman. Not a great comic book. Not particularly well drawn. Truth serum in there, though. I remember, because I've seen it. <laughs> With you guys. It's a shit day to go into effect. About two minutes. Just long enough for me to finish my point. Yeah, there's a lot of speeches in this one. <laughs> just remember, if you're not, uh, if you want to win, just talk, stop talking and do your business. And it is in that characteristic Superman stands alone. Superman. Superman has to put on a comic costume to become human. What Kent wears, the glasses, the business suit, that's, that's the, the costume. costume. Makes sense. Yes, he's, he's not wrong. You would have worn the costume of Arlene Plimpton. But you were born Beatrix Kiddo. It's kind of her choice, though, isn't it, if she wants to wear that costume? All those people you killed to get to me. Felt damn good, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, probably. Why did you run away from me with my baby? Probably because she didn't want her kid to be turned into a assassin. <laughs> like, I wouldn't want that. Can you just leave it by the door? Oh! That escalated quickly. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of detail about this pregnancy test. <laughs> I do like that they took the time it took. I overreact. A little, yeah. <laughs> Is that the first time we see them both in the same shot? And there are consequences to breaking the heart of a murdering bastard. Oh, that is a good point. You ain't kidding. Oh. Here we go. Okay. Oh, he taught her the thing. Okay. All right. That was a lot shorter of a fight than I thought it was going to be. But every once in a while, you can be a real cunt. <laughs> Might be the only time I actually enjoy the use of that word. Although I'm not too, I'm not too upset about that word normally either, so. As I say, he has to get up and walk his five steps. <laughs> She crying or laughing? I'm kind of loving it. <laughs> oh, the snake charmer. Is that, did he, we ever refer to this a snake charmer at any point? This looks like a music video of something. Like, it makes you think like, well, okay, was, was Quentin Tarantino like in love with her face or something? <laughs> and in very glossy lips. Okay, so there was no blood spurting. <laughs> <laughs> but I think some of that stuff was uh, was even worse visually. Ugh, definitely more visceral. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have nightmares about being buried alive now, though. Ugh, either that or snakes jumping at my face. Cause you know, I'm sure I'll get over it though, because that happens in Lonesome Dove too. So yeah, no, moving on. Moving on from the those ideas. Um, it's you know it's a surprising movie in many ways. Like Volume Two is so different than the first one. Um, you, you know, you think you're gearing up for this huge like showdown at the end and they mostly just talk and then like when the actual fight comes, it comes almost out of nowhere and it lasts only a couple seconds. Like, did that even last 30 seconds what they were doing? Um, 
And it's funny because I had totally forgotten about him telling her about the five point palm exploding heart technique. Uh, it's such a cool name. Uh, like way back in the beginning, because the, the scene at the table and then everything in between was so intense. Like I was so engrossed in like the conversation and what they were talking about and the, the connection between them. Like to, I was so engrossed in that to, that I didn't have time to think about what was going to happen in the next few minutes or try to predict anything. And y'all know that I, I like to spend time predicting what's going to happen, <laughs> but I didn't do that at all in this movie. Like I just kind of like let it play out in front of me and enjoyed it. Um, and I think that that's a sign of some really well-written dialogue and really great acting and all of that. I mean, but of course she was going to use that on him. Like, because otherwise, like, why would we have spent so much time hearing about it in such detail previously? It's a Chekhov's gun and all that things, you know, but it, it's so obvious. But it still took me by surprise, you know, and the fact that they don't get up from their chairs to fight, like, that was super cool. I really like that. There's a um, there's a simplicity to the fights in this one that is a nice change from that huge fight in volume one that took up like half the movie. Um, although I was totally expecting there to be a huge fight in this one too, um, but it's good that that didn't happen because I think it would have been distract a distraction from the story. It would have been to- it was totally unnecessary. So I'm glad it wasn't there. We did that in the first one, you know. We don't need to repeat ourselves here. Um, but, you know, I go back and forth between like, this is ridiculous and this is some genius artistry. And, and I do that with most of Tarantino's films, like, but I do lean more towards the genius in that, like, he knows that some of the stuff is doing that he, that he's doing is ridiculous. He includes it because it's ridiculous and we know it's ridiculous and he wants us to know that he knows it's ridiculous. And he just asks us to go along with his ridiculousness and just enjoy this crazy ride. And we do because... Uh, at least I do, because I've seen enough of his movies now to trust that there's going to be a decent payoff. There, there always is. Um, the, you know, the showdown is, is always an expertly crafted buildup of emotional tension for the entire preceding two hours of the movie that is just finally released in this explosion of physical action. For me, it's really captivating. And you have to celebrate him for his uniqueness, I think. Not necessarily in world cinema like you know we know where he gets most of his ideas from all of these influences that he incorporates from all over the world but in contemporary american cinema specifically like there aren't a lot of other filmmakers who can build tension the way that he can and build it to the point that this the explosion is so satisfying and so surprising um there's something about his style of filmmaking that just works so well for me i don't know I don't know what it is. Maybe you guys have more idea what it is that you can tell me. But because I, I know some people really hate his work and think like the accolades that he gets are overblown. But I, I really dig it. It works for me. I don't know. Let me know if it works for you too. I think it does. Or you probably wouldn't be watching this reaction if it didn't. So yeah, awesome. How much like we all love this movie. So great. Uh, so thanks so much for watching my reaction. Please take a moment to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button and the bell button to be notified when I post my next movie reaction. Um, I appreciate all your comments and recommendations and arguments and corrections when I screw up the facts. And I love when you guys start arguing with each other. That's super fun. Thanks for watching with me.